I'm Richard Vobes, TV's bald explorer, and I'm discovering Britain. This time, I'm in Sussex, and I'm on the search for giants, mechanical monsters that suck water out of the ground and pump it into town. Care to join me? In 1900, the town of Hastings, a growing coastal resort in East Sussex on the south coast of England, was running out of water. Like hundreds of Victorian towns across Britain at that time, Hastings' expansion was fast. As more and more people gravitated to the towns and cities to work and live, houses were hastily being constructed to accommodate them. As a consequence, clean water was in big demand. In Hastings, the borough engineer was tasked with finding a reliable source to provide an extra million gallons of water every day. I'm in the Breed Valley, a 10-mile stretch from Rye to Seddlescombe, after the Ice Age, 10,000 years ago, all of this was underwater. Over the years, it silted up and became farmable. I'm about seven miles from Hastings and a stone's throw from the village of Breed. And it was here that in 1904, three production wells, 10 feet in diameter and 270 feet deep, had been dug into the sandstone aquifer so that two giant steam pumping engines could extract the necessary water and supply the needs of Hastings. They're called the Breed Steam Giants. Decommissioned in 1964 and now a heritage site. Before I go in, just look at the purpose-built building that houses the engines. You don't find this level of design and beauty today in what is simply an out-of-the-way utility building. But the Victorians were a proud lot. Something missing, I think, from the bland utilitarian boxes that litter the country nowadays. My name is John Foxley, I'm the chairman of the Breed Steam Engine Society and we have been operating the society for the last 22 years to actually safeguard and restore heritage water pumps like the pump that you're seeing uh, behind me here, one of the steam giants of Breed that were designed to pump enormous quantities of water back in the Victorian and Edwardian age. Part of the society's a collecting policy is to collect water pumps uh, that were used predominantly for public water supply. This one behind me in fact was built by Tangiers, a firm in Birmingham, in 1904. They had an enormous uh, erecting shop at Smethwick in Birmingham. It covered several football pitches and there were hundreds of these sorts of engines that were under construction in the 1880s through to the 1920s. They're not only water pumps, but they were, they were designed as well to be used on board ships. There's two technologies uh, on display here. Above ground, it is marine technology, triple expansion steam engines, and below ground, under the engines in the basement, is the water technology, which are where the ram pumps are that do all the main pumping of the water. There were two pumps like this right. built in 1904 to actually pump one million gallons a day of drinking water all the way from Breed here yes. to Hastings, a distance of six miles. And each of those pumps had the ability to be able to lift that treated water 500 foot up onto the ridge at Hastings. Sadly, after the end of steam in 1964, 
the second one was redundant and was sadly scrapped. So it was all broken up and lost forever. How tall is it? It is 30 foot high and the big flywheel is 13 feet in diameter and it weighs 13 tonnes. Blimey, you wouldn't want that dropping on your foot, would you? Ah, uh, you wouldn't. And no. it came to the site, we believe, in one piece. It's in an interesting colour. It is, in fact, Sussex Harvest Gold. Oh, wow, it sounds like a beer, <laughs> Sussex Harvest Gold. Well, it does, it? in yeah. fact. Uh, you might have a good point there, but, in fact, a lot of farm uh, carts and so on were painted in this colour at that time. The array of steam engines on display should keep the enthusiast going for weeks on end. And for children, in the age of tablets, screens and laptops, it's absolutely jaw-dropping. Things move. Almost unheard of these days. It's actually very hard for me to explain all that's here. You're really going to have to turn up and have a look for yourselves. Listen to that great pumping sound. In 1940, there was a further shortage of water for the Hastings area, and that required an extra pump to do it. This is, this is the actual pump that was installed in 1940. So had technology um, moved on a bit? Yes, it had, actually. There's all sorts of different features on here. A higher steam pressure required which led to the need for new boilers. One of the purposes of the Breed Steam Engine Society is not only to restore the engines, but also to retain the skills that were necessary to make the whole thing work. We believe that there are three wow factors on this site. The first wow factor is going into the boiler house and seeing the wider collection. The second wow factor is the Tanji engines themselves. And the third wow factor is this engine. They are giants, aren't yes, they? That's yes, that's right. Indeed. Is this the same height as the other one? It's 37 feet high, a little bit taller. And it has a, a three and a half times the output. It can pump three and a half million gallons a day. It's a fantastic story and I think that a lot of people when they come they say to me where does the water come from in the first place? Which takes us right back to the beginning and the Breed Valley and the sandstone aquifer. The giants of Breed are open to the public on the first Saturday of the month and bank holiday Mondays. Definitely worth a visit. Join me again the next time I go bald exploring.